Guitar and Excel spreadsheet creation mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment. Part number eight. Get ready and don't fret. Remember, the board's fretted, so you don't have to be. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you have a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to the workbook, we got multiple tabs down below, including the example tab, the end result, the final product, in essence, the answer key, the starting point tabs tying into the starting points of the video presentations, the blank tab, where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing at this point in time. Quick recap of what we have done thus far. We listed out the musical alphabet with letters, the traditional way here, A, A sharp, A sharp being represented with an A and a B or B flat, whatever you want to call it. B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and then it uh, goes to G sharp and then it repeats again. So we've got the 12 notes and we repeated it two times over. We then numbered them, and I'm going to call these absolute numbers of the notes. They're not relative to the position in a scale or anything like that. These are absolute. So that's A1. We combined them together. I can call it number one absolute note or an A or A1. And then we built a scale from that. We started with this four for the C scale, and we used our major... Our, our major formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, which you can also say as two notes away, two notes away, one note away, two notes away, two notes away, one note away. And then of course that repeats, we've repeated it a few different times so that we can build our scale, which is going from C to C here, and then it starts over C to C here, and then it starts over. And we can imagine it going up to infinity this way, kind of like you can imagine a fretboard, I mean a, a guitar, a piano, a piano board going on forever. Although it goes up in octaves in the piano, you can imagine it just repeating in terms of the actual notes. And then we built our table on this side in terms of numbers so we can look at the differences between the notes as well as this way so that we can now see our notes that are in our scale, in this case the C scale, we can see the Roman numerals telling us what kind of chord we should be playing related to it, which would be either a major, minor, or diminished, and then we built out the notes that could be in an, an actual chord, which are of course coming from the scale, that the scale was built from the absolute, all of the notes in the musical alphabet, these first three being what we would need to construct the major and minor chords in these columns. And then we can add the other ones, which we would call seven, nines, 13, 11s, and 13s, based on us skipping every other note, as we can see, I think, most easily in our circle over here, which is what we constructed next, which is to say, when I construct my actual uh, chords, what I'm going to do is say, this is the one, and then I'm going to skip and so this three represents the relative position in our, our uh, scale, right? So now I'm taking the three note in the scale. So I skipped one, I'm over here, and now I've got the, the fifth. So now we're over here. So one, two, three, four, five, right? And then the seven. And, but then you get to the nine and whatnot, that means we've wrapped around again and we're starting over. That's why I think the circle uh, is a useful way to see it because instead of seeing the piano keys going on forever into infinity, you can see a circle just repeating on to uh, infinity. So now what we want to do is say, I, can I copy this? I want to see it not just for the major, but also for the minor and the other uh, <clears throat> the other modes. So let's let's so we can think of the modes two different ways, and it's useful to say, okay, if I'm on the key of C. I can look at the relative minor mode, which would mean all the notes are the same, but meaning all these notes are the same, but instead of counting it from C, I'm going to count it from the relative minor, which is the six uh, is an A. Uh, and so we could, we could see it that way. Or you might also, when you're playing, it's practical to then say, I would also like to see 
C minor, right? C minor has different notes in it. It's not the same scale, but you might be able to transition pivoting on C from C major to C minor or any of the other modes. It's easier, I think, conceptually to first think about that first way to say, I'm gonna use all the same notes, but I'm now gonna just focus on the minor. Note, I could focus on any other note, like I could do the D, that would be a Dorian, we'll get to that later, or the E, and I could do any of these notes and focus in on it. I'm gonna start with the minor though, because that's the most common. You go from a major to minor, those are usually the most useful transitions uh, to be making. So I'll do that first, even though in, in theory, you would think the next mode would be the Dorian, but we'll get to the Dorian next time. So how can I do that? I, I wanna, what I wanna do then is basically copy this whole thing, but then think about it as though the A is like the number one in, in a Dorian uh, kind of mode. So I'm gonna say, okay, what, 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 what I can do is I can try to copy this whole thing and then change, uh, change the formatting of this table to represent uh, the formatting of the, of the mode of a minor. I'm not doing Dorian, I'm doing minor. So let's try to first to copy the whole thing. I say, well, what if I just start off by copying, let's copy the skinny, well, not the skinny. Do I want the skinny? Yeah, let's copy the skinny going from the skinny all the way out to the end of our circle over here. And then I'm gonna right click and copy that as my starting point. And let's see what we can do with it. I'll put that over here on BB. We'll right click and paste it, boom. So now we've got the same thing and a lot of the relative information should pull over, although it's gonna get messed up sometimes when we use those absolute references and whatnot. So now we wanna think about how we can kind of change this table. Let's first think about the table. I'm gonna use the, the relative uh, scales are gonna be the same, meaning now I wanna say this represents the relative one position of a minor now instead of the major. So maybe I should change the title first here. So I'll say this is gonna be the minor or a, I think this is how you spell it, Aeolian, I hope, which is the six, uh, sixth note from our major. And that means the relative major. In other words, now we're looking at the minor, which you can also call the Greek term Aeolian if you're talking in terms of modes. But major and minor, we often use like the English terms, I guess, of major and minor. The other modes, we will use the Greek, but you might not hear it called Aeolian, especially if someone's trying to kind of confuse you or whatnot. But uh, it's going to be the, the sixth note. So uh, what I'm trying to reference here is that it's the sixth note from uh, the relative major. So a lot of times if you're trying to say I'm playing in minor, it's useful to then think about what the relative major is of it. And, and so you'd have to then kind of work backwards. We'll talk more about that in a second to figure out what it is the minor of, right? And so in this case, we're looking at an A, which is going to be the relative minor of the C major. All right, now let's see how we can just fix this table. So now I'm gonna say this table needs to be fixed. So this four up top, what I'm gonna do is say, this is gonna be equal to, and I'm gonna say equal and scroll over to my table over here. And I'm using the same notes as this table in the major, but I'm starting on the sixth note, which is down here. So now I'm starting on this one, that's gonna be my, one note so i'm going to pick up that one right here and then i'm going to make this blue instead of green because this is not one that i want to change so i'm just going to keep that as is and then i want to be copying my formula the formula can't be the same formula whole whole that's the major formula but if i can copy the same formula from the same point over here right so this if i go over here this is whole whole half whole 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 half that's the formula if i started counting from the major position but now i'm going to start counting from the sixth position right so if i start counting uh, from the six if i'm here the next step up is going to be two so notice i'm going to have the same pattern but i'm starting from a different position so i'm going to start here and then it goes whole and then, then the, and then the whole, whole, whole half again. So I'm gonna pick up this two, 
Instead, I'm going to delete everything below it. And if I copy that down, so that takes me, that's right. And then I copy that down, so that looks good. And if I copy that down to here, I'm at 11. And let's go one more. That brings me to one. And then so now I've gone from A to uh, A. So that looks good. So now you can kind of see the, the whole, whole half in there. But we're starting from note number six. So you can see why we're basically doing the same thing. We're using that we're going to end up with the same notes. But you can think of the pattern being different because we're starting from the pattern from the sixth note instead of on the one note. And then the pattern will repeat. Now, I'm, I'm actually going to do it a different way. Let's actually delete this. I think it'd be easier to see this way. I'm going to pick up that one and then I'm going to delete all of this stuff. And then say, let's just copy this one down. It's going to copy from that relative position down. And so there now it's going to be uh, repeating down here another one. And now because I what I'm doing is I'm copying, I'm going to reference it over here so you can see where it's coming from. I'm just copying those notes and the pattern is going to be repeating because we're picking up all the same notes. So I'll say do it that way. But if I keep doing this, I can't go all the way down because I'm going to run out of space. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to say now the pattern is repeating. So instead of putting a one here, I'm just going to say this equals the one above it. And now when I copy that down, it'll keep copying that same pattern down, which should repeat. And it just keeps on taking the relative position above it. And now instead of me pulling over the formula pattern, I can create my formula pattern this way. This is going to be equal to this minus this. So now this is two notes away. So if I copy that down, let's copy that all the way down. Now, uh, now this doesn't work. Why? Because it's two notes away, one note array, two, two, one, two. And then we run into a problem here because we end up with this negative number. So now let's try an if formula to fix that. So say, okay, how can I fix that to make this work? I could say, let's delete this. Oh, not that. I'm going to delete the whole thing. Let's delete this and say, okay, I'm going to say equals if logic function. We're going to say if this minus this, let's put more brackets around it. Another set of brackets to make sure I'm picking both of those things up. If that whole thing is greater than zero, then comma, what do you want it to do? Just do that. Take this. You can't see the cell, but you could see, right? What do you want it to do? I'm going to, I'll put it down here. Take this uh, minus this and then comma. What if, what if uh, it is negative? Well, if it's negative, I still want you to take this minus this, but then add 12 to it. So if it's a negative number, we add back the 12 because there's 12 notes and that should bring us back to the proper position. So let's see if that works. Let's put our cursor here, double click on down. So now you've got the two away, th then one, two, two, one, and so on. So there we have it. Now, if you, if you count from this position, remember the relative, this is the six, Right, if I look at my circle over here, I had I was on four if I count that as the major, the one. Now I'm over here. So so now I'm going to the four, right? From here's my one. If I go back to the four and I start from the four, I'll see that same pattern, right? So if I start from this note, then you've got the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, same pattern. But now I'm starting from the six and starting the pattern there, which means you get a you get a whole, a half whole whole, half whole whole right. So it's just a, so it's it's basically the same pattern. You just have a different starting point. You're going to end up with the same notes, and then you've got this formula, which I think is populating uh, properly. Actually, it's not because of the absolute references involved. So this one is taking the interval. Uh, from the root. So I want to see how far the absolute difference is, absolute distance is from each note to the to the root. So I'm going to try to redo this. I'm going to say this is if brackets and I'm going to do the uh, the test of 
another brackets and I'm going to say if this number minus this number closing up the brackets is greater than zero then comma what do you want us to do I just want you to take this number minus this number but what do you want to do if it's less than zero then I want you to take again this number minus this number but and you guessed it add 12 to it right we got to add 12 to it and then we get back to our two I need to make some of it absolute because I want this number to move down but not this number up top so I'm going to go up top and every time I see that the BE2 which is this one I want to make it absolute now if I make it absolute that will work here but I'd like to be able to copy this all to the right at some future point and not have to redo the formula again when we go to the Dorian mode so what I'm going to do is say I need a mixed reference I don't want this number to move down when I copy it down but it can move to the right when we eventually do that therefore uh, I want it I don't want it to move down so a dollar sign before the number not before the letter mixed reference and so I'm going to put a dollar sign before the two over here as well and then a dollar sign before the two over here as well and then enter and then I'll copy that down just double click in the fill handle this time and I think it's doing what we want now so now this is this is uh, eight away eight minus one and then 10 away and then 12 so I think I think it's populating the way we want it to populate so now let's look at our table over here and say we looked up these numbers and so so obviously this is pulling I can and I can use these tools up top to see where it's coming from I use this this is actually in the data tab and and uh, you can you can see where they're coming from by going to actually it's in the formulas tab formulas tab formulas and the trace and the trace depends and then the remove so you can kind of see where your formulas are coming from so that becomes useful so I could say okay they're coming from here which looks like I might have used some kind of absolute reference in here to do that so I'm going to go okay I'm going to turn that off and say if I go into here I can see it. oh yeah there's the absolute reference that we had to use or that was used in order to uh to do those so I can see that so let's repopulate this so I'm actually let's just see if we can uh remove this and just say I'm just going to delete this whole thing and try it again so that's going to be an equals an x lookup and then I'm going to say brackets the lookup value is going to be this number plus this number now I don't have to say plus right there because this is zero but I want to pick those up because I want to be able to copy this across whereas the next one's going to be this plus the two right this plus the four so then I'm going to say comma the lookup array I want you to find that number excel over here control shift down so there it is there and then comma and then what do we want to return we want the return array to be for this one just uh the numbers I'm going to just pick up the numbers to start with and then we'll do the letters are down below so that one and enter so it picks up uh the one which is the a let's bring it to back to a c well that's a, the relative minor is an a I, I thought we were to say. so the relative minor of the c is an a represented by a one all right so that looks correct now I want to be able to copy it so when I copy it I want this part to be able to move to the right but not this number so let's see but you know what might be even more useful long term is to try to have everything relative and then when I copy the entire thing and try to do the Dorian and the other modes I don't have to repeat this so let's test out that so I'm going to do the long work this time which might make the work easier when we copy this whole thing over next time so I'm just going to repeat every time this time so we'll practice the X lookup uh, multiple times so X lookup tab I'm going to say now it's going to be this plus that one and then comma and the lookup array is going to be this control shift down and then comma the return array is going to be this one and control shift down and then enter and I'm just going to do this every for each one which I know is tedious but I think it might help us next time when we do the Dorian so I'm going to say this equals x lookup and then 
Uh, and then we want the lookup value is now this plus this, and then comma, the uh, lookup array is gonna be control shift down, comma, and then the return array is gonna be here, control shift down, enter, and then I'm gonna do it again, equals X lookup, tab lookup value is this plus this, comma, and then we'll pick up the arrays, control shift down, comma, and this one, and control shift down, and then enter. And I might be able to just cop, maybe I can copy these arrays, and that'll make it a little bit easier. Maybe I can say co copy control C, and then I'm gonna do it here. This equals X lookup, and then I'm gonna say this plus this comma control V pasting that in and there's our array. So that's not too bad. So this equals X lookup and I'm going to say this let's keep it the same this plus this and then comma boom and so there we have that and then this one is going to be equal to this plus this comma control v and that didn't work okay paso that plus 12 and the lookup array is i don't think i put the x lookup in there x lookup and then this plus this comma pasting boom and then this is gonna be equal to X lookup. And then this is this one now, plus this comma control V. I'm gonna say tab this time. And then this equals X lookup tab. And then we're gonna pick up this plus this comma control V tab equals X lookup this plus this comma control V tab equals x lookup this plus this comma control v tab equals x lookup this plus this comma control v tab equals x lookup this plus this comma control v tab equals x lookup this plus this comma control V and I know this is tedious X but I think but again I think it'll help when we copy it across this there is it we could use absolute references and whatnot but that might be a short term so we'll test out the long term solution so th this is X lookup it's going to be this plus this comma control V tab this equals X lookup this plus this comma control V tab this equals X lookup. Let's do it the same way. This plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup. This plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup. This plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup. This plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup tab this plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup this plus this comma control V tab. This equals X lookup this plus this comma control V tab equals X lookup this plus this comma control V tab and we will repeat the process multiple more times and this look up is brackets this this comma control V equals X this comma this plus this comma control v enter 
this equals x lookup this and this comma control v this is equal x lookup this and this comma control v and this equals x lookup this and this comma control v this is now i have to have x lookup this and this comma control v and this equals x lookup this and this comma control v this is x lookup this and this comma control v this is x lookup this and this comma control v this is x lookup this and this comma control v this is x lookup this and this comma control v x lookup this and this comma control v x equals x lookup this and this comma control v this is x lookup this and this comma control v equals x lookup this and this comma control v equals x lookup this and this comma control v one more round i didn't hear no bell equals x lookup this and this comma control v equals x lookup this and hold on a second is that right yeah this and this comma control v equals x lookup equals x lookup this and this comma control v and x lookup i'm getting excited because we're almost there this and this comma control v and this equals x lookup this and this comma control v and this equals x lookup enjoy these last two because this is it and we're done we have to stop after that equals x lookup this and this and then comma control v okay now hopefully i got that correct and note that when you're looking at these worksheets you could compare these to to an actual worksheet that you look up online right and just make sure that you have all your numbers correct once we get down here you can kind of double check down here uh to you know any worksheet that you find in google to just double check your numbers i don't make any guarantees of not making a mistake as we go through this but we'll practice with those worksheets afterwards i'm hoping and then uh, that'll help us to kind of drill down and fine tune any mistakes and anything that we might be able to improve on possibly okay so now the other thing is up top we have these numbers now this one if i look at this this is my absolute distance now this one doesn't work again if i go here and i say okay what happened with this one uh and i trace this out it's like okay now it's picking up an absolute from over there that doesn't work okay so what i wanted to do is to take this uh minus this number which which should give me a three right so i'm going to say all right let's let's uh try to do this again and i'm going to say this one's always going to basically be zero i don't even need this one because it's always zero let's just start at this one this is going to be equal to and i'm going to say an an if function again so let's do an if thing so we'll say this is going to be equal to if brackets and then i'm going to put an, another brackets around i want this number uh minus this number and if that is brackets if that is greater than zero then what we want you to do is just take that number if that's greater than zero then i need a comma then comma what do we want you to do just take that number minus this number but if it's not what do we want you to do we want you to take this number minus this number and then add 12 to it because it'll be negative there's 12 notes in the key and the 12 should bring us back to the correct point so that comes out to a three that looks correct now when i copy this to the right i get to the same issue i'm like well 
I want to make it so I can copy it to the right, but I also want to make it so that I can copy this entire sheet and make the Dorian mode where everything is relative. So I kind of want to reduce the absolute references if I can. So is there a way I can adjust this without messing it up so I can copy the entire worksheet over? So for example, this one, I want this number to move to the right. I, I want this number uh, to stay where it is. So there's, I don't think there's any way I can really do that so that, so that I can copy this over because when I copy the entire worksheet over, I want it to, I want the letters to move to the right. So again, I think it, it might be worthwhile to do the tedious thing here of, of re-inputting without absolute references so that I can then copy the entire thing over later. So what I'm going to do is just repeat this. It's only a couple times this time. So it's going to be if brackets, brackets, this minus this, I still need to do the logic test here because when I copy to the Dorian mode, then it might work out that the logic test is going to be necessary. So this minus this brackets, if it's greater than the zero, then we want you to take this minus the first one. And if it's not, then I still want you to take this minus the first one plus 12. Close it up and then tab. Let's do it again. Equals if brackets and then another brackets, this minus this. If that is greater than zero, then I want you to just do this minus this. Otherwise, I want you to do this minus this plus 12 tab. It's gonna close it up for me. I say, yes, I this is gonna be equal to if brackets brackets, this minus this is greater than zero, then comma, I want you to take that minus that but if not comma i want you to still take that minus that but add 12 and close it up this time tab equals if brackets brackets this minus this close up the brackets is greater than zero then comma i want you to take this minus this comma if not though still take this minus this but then add 12, close up the brackets one more time, equals if brackets brackets, this minus this brackets is greater than zero, then comma, do this minus this. But if it's not comma, still do this minus this, but add 12 to it and brackets. Okay, so we don't have any absolute references. So now when I copy this whole thing over, hopefully it'll move over appropriately. Okay, so I think I have every, I hope I have everything laid out here properly. So now if I move down here, this whole thing should populate uh, correctly because most of this is just pulling from the one above. And now I'm looking in here. Now notice here, it's, t it's taking the X lookup from this table, from this table. Is that a problem? Not really because we are, we're using the same notes in this scale as we are in that scale over there. So it's not really a problem that it's pulling from that table. And it won't be a problem as long as we're going to the right. But when we start copying down, then we're gonna have <clears throat> then we're gonna have a different table. So it would be better really if I can get it from this table. There's two solutions here to make my copying easier. I could take instead of using this table, I could reference everything to the entire scale over here. I can use this table because that'll work no matter what. It's kind of nice to use the table relative right here if I could, because that one, it's easy for me to fix things because it's right next to what I'm looking at. So I'd kind of like to use, use this table to pick up this information. So I'm thinking, okay, uh, let's, let's see if I can adjust these ranges. So I'm gonna try to adjust these and try to do it as fast as I can here. So, and this will help me with the long term when we copy it down. So what is this doing again? All I'm doing is saying, I wanna look at this note up top. I wanna to find it over here in this column, that one, and I want you to return the one A. So that's an X lookup. Let's redo this one. I'm gonna say this equals X lookup. I'm gonna pick up, this is the value I wanna look up and then comma, then the array, the lookup array, I want to be here. Control shift down and then comma, the return, the return array, what do we want it to give us back then? 
pulling this down. Can't pull this, grab it without clicking on anything. And then pull it down, return array, this one, control shift down and enter. So that's good. Now what I'd like to do is replace this bit and all of the other ones so that, so that I don't have to use absolute references and then I can copy the whole thing across. So I'm going to double click here. I'm just going to re, I'm just going to re format this and say control V tab. I should get to the same number, double click and then control V tab, double click. And then this bit control V tab, double click. I'm going to pick up control V tab, double click and control V tab, double click. So again, tedious work here, but I think it's going to save us once we start copying all the different modes. So I'm going to say this one, control V tab, this one, and take this control V tab, this one, this bit, control V tab, this bit, and we're going to say control V tab. Ah, uh, que paso, this bit. Control V tab, this bit, control V tab, this bit, control V enter, and then this bit, control V tab, this bit, control V tab. So you probably get the pattern here. So if you want to fast forward, you know, you can, but I'm going to show the whole process just to be thorough, like to be thorough. Don't want any unthoroughness. Like you didn't show me how to do that step. Yeah, well, I showed you. You just have to watch like 20 hours of of uh, of uh, stuff, and you would see like in hour 7.4536. That's where it was. That's where you, you should have been able to find that and pick it up. So we'll say this is this one. And as my old school would say, well, you gotta, you, you know what you gotta do is you've gotta trim that problem down to under five minutes. If you could just trim, if you could just trim the whole process down to under five minutes, that would be great. That would be great. But well, that, I don't think I can do that because it's, it's kind of, it's, it's more complicated than a five minute thing. Well, yeah, but you know, the five, five minutes, that's what people's ex attention span is. And you have to cram everything into people's attention span or else it's your fault that people don't know what, the, what's going on, but that's, that's impossible. You can't do that. No, oh, come on. Let's have a little optimism here. Five minutes, you can learn everything there is to know in Excel. If you had any skill, if you had any skill at all with your teaching capacities, then that's, then you could do it in five minutes and all of your knowledge would be given to someone as though they jack themselves into the matrix like Neo in the movie. But that's just a movie. That doesn't really have, you can't really do that. Oh, come on. Come on. Five minutes. Okay. So there we have it. So, <laughs> so hopefully I did that right. We'll check it out as we go forward, but, but in the future we'll, and I think these all copy over relative as well. So <clears throat> I'm going to have to possibly change the Roman numerals. Uh, because the Roman numerals are off now, you'll note, which is another kind of weird formula. So we'll continue with that next time because we're going kind of long here.